Dr. Vidan is an associate professor of English literature at Cal State Los Angeles. He received his PhD in postcolonial studies from London. He's written extensively and now is the faculty director for the first in prison program at Los Angeles County, Lancaster. <laughs> so how did this idea come to mind for you in the first place? Well, um, when you step into a prison, uh, I ended up there from a circuitous route. Um, I was involved in a dog program. We started a, a dog program in a prison in, in California. And from that, I started doing um, writing around the experience of, of feeling a dog for the first time. Uh, there was a prison uh, in, near San Luis Obispo, and um, there was a guy in there that had been incarcerated for 43 years when I met him. And uh, when he touched the, the dog, he hadn't touched one since he was a kid, he just mm. uh, burst out like uncontrollable, like his whole body moved with, with, with tears. Um, and so I've seen these kind of events happen and thinking uh, that that needed to be told as a story for, for two reasons. One, for the kind of individual healing that can come from that, reflecting upon, well, why did I feel like this? And, and that goes back into a whole kind of uh, life of trauma that you can then see. But then also for um, a kind of, I guess, political reason, one of the things about these stories not getting out there and only reading about, um, you know, something you read in the newspaper about who, who, who people in prison are, um, it, me it makes it much easier to lock people up for indeterminate sentences and forget about them. Most prisons are in these remote places out in the desert that you don't know are there really. Um, and then prisons, basically the job of prison and prison guards is for nothing to happen. So anyone going into prison, it's very hard to go into a prison and to start a program because um, they don't want people in there telling so, these yeah, kind of stories. So yeah, exactly, how do these even start? Like, walk us through the process. Like you start approaching these prisons and how was like you going there and how does it, it go, the program? It, it was just one of those things where everything kind of fell into alignment and um, I managed to, it, it, you know, a lot of it was the people in the prison themselves that, that became such powerful advocates for it and powerful voices for it that eventually the, you know, the prison starts to trust you a little bit and then it helped a lot that I was a professor at Cal State LA because being part of a big institution, they treated me differently than if I was just a kind of individual volunteer. And then from there, we were able to start all the other programs, Words Uncaged and, and, and the BA program as well. Yes, yeah, so our people who have been in prison for a long time, when you approach them, are they actually open to writing and sharing these emotions? Because it seems like once you're withdrawn for so long, you might be kind of a skeptic about this, like, are they actually open? Uh, yes, I mean, I think I've worked with a kind of selective group of men in, in prison that are selected by other, by their peers, and kind of vouch for someone that's ready to, ready to go on this journey. Not everyone in prison is ready at the time that you meet them, mm -hmm. um, but knowing that that opportunity is there, that, you know, I mean, sitting right there, uh, Tobias, one of my closest friends, uh, 28 years in prison, just got out not too long ago. Uh, you, would, you would never know that to see him now, um, but the openness that he had when I met him, as well as you know, many other men on the yard, uh, is I think what people crave um, in the everyday world, because especially if someone like me that doesn't like cell phones much, uh, having no electronic communication, things like that, having, having really nothing in terms of resources makes you cultivate these inner kind of um, capacities and these, these ways of being in the world that, um, you know, to me is quite profound. Do you hope this will bring change in the justice system? Is it already happening, the conversations? Because as we know, there is a lot of profiling for 
Latinos and Afro Americans, mm -hmm. and there's definitely something that needs to change. Do you yeah. notice already a little change, or that's the hope? Well, there, in a way, there's a change. I think there's a change in public opinion, and and there seems to be an interest now um, that there wasn't when I started this in 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 changing mass incarceration. But on a kind of actual level, not that much has really changed. I mean, we still have in California sentences that are against the European, against European law. I'm from London and in Europe, you can't have a life without parole sentence. All, all of Europe, you can't just lock someone up and say they're never getting out without a parole hearing. Not to say that you can keep them in if they keep doing what they're doing. Um, and so, America and California is unique in, in a lot of its sentences thing. There's been a couple of significant changes like um, juvenile offenders don't get life without parole now if you're 16 or 15. But there hasn't been enough of a change really. But I hope that that's kind of starting with a kind of attention yes. that this is getting. Exactly. My inspiration when I heard about it is it's really like hopefully Everyone here, some of you will be uh, motivated to get involved. I got very fortunate to purchase one of their handmade books uh, last week at a literary fair. It's a treasure, so that's what that postcard is. You can definitely connect and contribute. And uh, we'd like someone from the audience to maybe ask a question. Hi, my name is Catherine Garces, and I work a lot with the Latino community where it's finance. When I sit with these families, to them about the fact that you know they've been incarcerated a lot of times I've heard that they become institutionalized writing these stories and everything that they've written does it inspire them to stay out and you know um, I would say like do something better for their lives that because I know I work with them so much that a lot of times the mothers tell me it's a matter of time when they go back the old moms my question is, writing these stories, does it inspire them to stay out and do something better out of their lives? Yes, I mean, uh, I work with a lot of people that have had very long sentences, like 25, 30 years, 15, 20 years, and most people that, by the time they come to me, have made the decision to change and not go back to prison, so, but to, but to address your particular kind of community that you're talking about, um, we've worked with people in um, kids in juvenile hall that are, of, of that kind of demographic. And I think putting language to something makes it concrete and real. I mean, it, it, in a way, you've got to imagine it, um, but not just imagine it as like a fantasy, detail it, put your own language to it, your own rich language to it. And, and that makes it more concrete. And I think in that sense, people that do that, it's, very, I mean, I, everyone that we've got out of prison that I've written letters for, which has been quite a lot, um, I vouch for them 100%. I would bet all my money that none of them would go back to prison. Um, because you can see the work that's been done, and writing is a very important part of uh, the person themselves giving voice to it, rather than just going from like a negative story of, let's say, a gang, to someone like me or you know some other so supposed expert telling them now you've got to do this. And so that, that link in the middle is what's often missing where the, the person themselves has tried to figure out, well, what is it I want to be? How do I do that? What's my language for describing that?